All men dream, but not equally. Those who dream by night, in the dusty recesses of their minds, wake in the day to find that it was vanity. But the dreamers of the day are dangerous men, for they may act their dream with open eyes to make it possible. This I did. Working on Uncharted is different for me than any other project I do because I have so much involvement. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm working with Naughty Dog from the time we cast through right to the, especially on the book, right to the end of their, their development. I mean, and it's about 16 to 18 months that I'm actually involved with it. You know, every couple weeks we're in the studio, we're rewriting things, we're putting things together. And, um, you know, I, they, they've in, invited me to to be this, uh, you know, this immersed in the project. And, you know, quite frankly, it, it really came out of all the, the attention that I got, uh, being the actor. And I saw so many people who worked so hard and got none of that attention. And they really do deserve it. You know, the guy who, uh, who's, you know, does the texture on the walls of your favorite game, the guy who, created the dragon, the programmer who came up with the, the, the script to, to make this, you know, movement of your favorite character work. As much fun as they have, they also work their asses off and they deserve to be highlighted. I mean, they are, they've all, after five and a half years working with them, they've all become friends of mine now. And, uh, you know, I have friends at a lot of different developers and I hopefully Uncharted, Drake's Journal will be the first book in a line of books from uh, our company, Gamespheres.com, that's going to, you know, Gamespheres wants to give credit where credit's due. I'm the actor, I'm the guy here talking to you, uh, and that's all well and good, that's my job. But, you know, I, I don't want to discount the incredible hard work that these people do. The bad thing about it is you can't give, tell everybody's story, but, you know, it was enough to show people um, how hard they work, um, how brilliant they are, and uh, you know, also get into some of the stories on the motion capture stage and at the developer's office that you know usually will just stay at, the, at around the lunch table or just be something that everybody talks about later on. There's a lot of ad libbing in the, uh, I would say more so in the the gameplay uh, uh, rather than the cutscenes. In the cutscenes, it's it's uh, rather rare that you know we, we take the time to go in and uh, uh, you know rehearse it for a full day before, which is a luxury a lot of games don't afford. But we rehearse it, and in there we'll take an already brilliant script that Amy Hennig reads, and we'll try things. I know we we talked in the in the, the book Drake's Journal uh, about uh, Graham McTavish who uh, played Charlie Cutter in this version. It was Lazarevich in Uncharted 2. Uh, at one point, we were doing these the squeeze through, so we're motion capturing, kind of going through these alleyways and things. And he just started laughing. He said, "Wouldn't it be funny if this thug, this uh, was, was claustrophobic?" And she said, "Try that." And he went and he did it, and it became not only an interesting character quirk that people really enjoyed. It actually ended up, she ended up weaving that quirk into the story later on when there's a big fight between Nate and, and Charlie. Uh, but you know, that's one instance where the actor, not me, but the actor, uh, Graham, who's brilliant, uh, was, was uh, allowed to infuse his own ideas. You know, I, I push myself outside my natural voice more than anybody. Um, early on, uh, it was just my my voice um, with, you know, just different tones, I guess. But, uh, you know, um, Arkham City, uh, the Penguin, is one of my favorites this past year just because, you know, Rocksteady, uh, you know, British developer allowing me to do, first of all, a, a, a Cockney accent was just brilliant and they were right there fixing things so anybody who has a problem with it you, you write them a letter it's not me I, I, I like moving I you know I, I like doing things outside the outside the box you know it's the it's the voiceover in general uh, for the animated shows that I do and 
the video games I do. It's it's always fun to kind of uh, you know everybody gets to be a character actor. You get to to try different things and. Um, I, I find it fun, you know, it, it, it's hard to sustain certain things for a while, I mean, if, if they're kind of vocally taxing, but I, I didn't approach the, the Penguin role any differently than anything I normally do, you know, they had, uh, the, the, the Rocksteady animators had great visuals for, for us when the, the role was being cast, and you know, I got this picture of this character with a co you, know, his, you know, stout and a Coke bottle jammed in his eye and a cigar, and, just the, the, the way he looked, kind of about, you know, I just started playing around. Sometimes I'll show my, my, my kids, I'll be like, you know, what if he sounds like this? And they're like, oh yeah, that's good, you know, like, it, so you can, you can play around with those kind of things. So it, it's a lot easier when you have something visual to, to kind of help you decide what that character is. Is he big? Is he short? Is he tall? Is he thin? Heavy? Older? Um, you know, I grew up in a house where my dad smoked cigars a lot, so. You know, you know there's going to be a little bit of texture to that voice and then, uh, and then you take it from there. And, and, and I don't do research because I don't want to necessarily rip off somebody else's uh, take. Give it my own take and, and throw it out to, the, to them and say, hey, do you think this works? And I, I really like the guys at Rocksteady and I think they, everybody, does, you know, it's a, it's a boutique small developer who makes, you know, incredible games and um, you know, they should be very proud. You know, the great thing, great thing about Uncharted is it's my voice, it's my sense of humor, it's my personality. That, I mean, uh, other than his freakish ability to climb things, uh, he's very much who I am. So when you're, as an actor, you know, and you want to stretch yourself or look to do other things, uh, I've had a bunch of roles that I really enjoyed. The Penguin, obviously, was great. Um, in um, Ratchet and Clank, Crack in Time, I got to do Sigmund. The little robot who had this kind of voice, and it was, you know, so sure, and that was great. Um, I can't not, you know, stress Portal, how great that was, to be able to do those spheres, and uh, just amazing writing, and then just, they just said, you know, take this and say anything else you want, but let's stick with this script and go off. And, uh, you know, talk about going off on tangents, you know, they, uh, that, it was just fun. I, re I remember those sessions vividly because they were just so much fun. Um, Dr. Richthofen in, in Call of Duty, some of the stuff that's written in there is so grotesquely funny and, and hysterical that, you know, and, and with that, um, that voice, I mean, they, they, they're, they're all fun. I mean, you know, that's, that's the great thing about games, you know, as long as you keep in mind that we're making games, we're not, you know, changing public policy, we're not, uh, doing uh, brain surgery, we're making games. And, and you know, if you can go in there with that attitude and have so much fun, uh, I love being stretched like that. You know, I, I'm, I, I've said this before, I'm, I, I, I'm not a gamer because I'm not very good at it, but I'm a huge fan of the gaming industry. And, and I, I think gamers in general get, uh, are, are, don't have as, uh, given as much credit uh, for their ability and their, you know, how savvy they are. And, in terms of, uh, you know, some people say, oh, it's just a game, just give them whatever they want, it's a racing game. You know, no, you need to, I mean, it's the technology, uh, they've caught up with what technology is, and they want more out of their, their experience. And uh, I'm really, uh, really psyched and, and, and proud to be part of this industry at this time, because I still think that it's got a long way to go. The most tantalizing thing about this book, quite possibly, could be that it, um, Starting in 2012, it will be a new book every month. And how do, how do we do that? Well, a uh, little uh, thing called QR codes. There are QR codes placed in the, uh, throughout the book. There's about 19 of them that link to about uh, 45 to 50 videos. Uh, and what you do is you just have a QR reader on your phone, boom, and up will come whatever you're reading about. Normally, it'll, up will come video from uh, the footage that we took behind the scenes. And, um, uh, you know, my, my business partner and brother-in-law, Rob, uh, he's the one who kind of changes the videos up. So I never know what's going to be coming up. Uh, and sometimes I don't even know they took video of things. So some, some of the videos that people will see are things that I don't even, I, I didn't even know. Uh, it could be a, you know, a little while we're getting coffee, it could be anything. It, sometimes it's just the scenes of how we've done it. But what those, we, we have the, the, the ability to just change those. Uh, the code stays the same, 
So what we're going to do is, uh, starting in January, we're going to switch up the codes with other videos, and then February 1, we're going to switch them up again. So every month, you can go back in through the QR codes, and you'll see new videos from the whole development. And then we'll probably just repeat them. Uh, so the ones playing in December now, we'll probably re repeat next December. Um, or we may, or I'm thinking, we might come up with a way to like pick, maybe do a contest where everybody picks their favorite, and then starting you know January 2013, right. those will be the final ones. So we're not constantly. We will run out of videos, and then I'll just be taking things in my backyard, be mowing the lawn or something. It'll just be. Um, and another uh, tidbit: uh, it, the book is available at Amazon.com. Um, uh, the collector's edition hardbacks we will have 500. Uh, we're going to sign them, and there's there's only going to be a limited first edition run. Uh, and they're, they're probably going to be priced, uh, the, the book right now on Amazon is at $19.99. The hardbacks uh, with cost and everything are going to be about uh, $39.99. Uh, but another exciting thing is uh, we've gotten the rights from Sony to do a, an app uh, for the iPad right now. Uh, Android may be coming in the future, but the, uh, an app, Apple uh, will be available on iTunes, hopefully by the, ho uh, by the Christmas holidays. I don't have any other juicier so tidbits. So much great stuff. I would love to tell you there's like a big naked picture of Richard McGonagall, Sully, <laughs> uh, in a fold-out centerfold, uh, but um, we couldn't fit it on a centerfold. He's gonna keep that. You're welcome, Richard. <laughs>